Good morning. Welcome to worship. I am Pastor Matt, and it's a pleasure to have you join us as we celebrate Jesus this morning. And a welcome to those of you joining us online. If you get an opportunity, I'd love for you just to tell us that you're joining us, both check in and make a comment underneath the, the live stream there, just so we know that you're with us and we can welcome you in. Um, this is not normal attire, I know, for a Sunday morning, uh, but I was told that if you're going to do an ugly sweater weekend, you go all in on an ugly sweater weekend. So um, I gave it my all. So I hope you enjoy today. Uh, friends, a few announcements before we begin. First of all, if you have any prayer requests, and I've already seen them start to roll in, uh, we'd love for you to get those in before the message time today. In fact, I encourage you to pull out your phone right now, send us messages of thanksgiving, as well as prayers of need. That way, uh, we know what to pray for. Those will be sent in to myself. I'll pray over those in worship today, but our prayer warriors all over the congregation will be praying over all of those prayer requests all week long. And friends, if you are so moved to give, you can do that through the Church Center app as well as online at pop.church, knowing that your offerings go to the ministry and the expansion of the gospel in Palatine and the Chicagoland area. Today we are going to read through the always read and always well-known book of Ezra today. Everybody reads that book, I'm sure, and it's talking about the building of the temple. And I'm going to give you a little preview I had to rate, take the building of the temple and connect it to the birth of Jesus. I did it. It took a while, but I did it. So friends, with all that said, we're going to start our service today by lighting our Advent wreath. Friends, we're in our fourth week of Advent, and the Advent wreath marks our journey to Christmas, our journey to the manger. The fourth candle represents peace and is called the angel's candle. The angels announced that Jesus came to bring peace. He came to bring people close to God and to each other again. Friends, let us stand as we open worship, worship this morning with our call to worship. <clears throat> the Lord is glorious and exalted. God's people are often in distress and sorrow. We sometimes do not feel the Lord's presence. The Lord was the shepherd of his people Israel. In this Advent season, we stand on tiptoe. And we sing.
Friends, let us take a moment of silence and talk to God. Prepare the way of the Lord. Let us make our confession to God. So friends, we pray these words together. Almighty God, you who shaped out of nothing all that is, forgive us for returning empty-handed. You who called forth light, forgive our preferences for the dark. You who sent John to be a voice crying, Forgive our unwillingness to say anything at all. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, the good news of this Advent season is forgiveness of sins and new life. Let us commit our lives to Christ's way of hope and peace. Thanks be to the Advent God who comes among us, setting us free to love and serve. You may be seated as we prepare our hearts and minds to hear God's word this morning. Our first reading this morning is taken from the first and third chapters of the book of Ezra. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, In order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and also to put it in writing. This is what Cyrus, king of Persia, said. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of his people among you may go up to Jerusalem and Judah and build the temple of the Lord, the God of Israel, the God who is in Jerusalem, and may their God be with them. In any locality where survivors may now be living, the people are to provide them with silver and gold, with goods and livestock and free will offerings for the temple of God in Jerusalem." When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, the people assembled together as one in Jerusalem. Then Joshua, son of Josadak, and his fellow priest, Azerubabel, son of Sheatil, and his associates began to build the altar of the God of Israel to sacrifice burnt offerings on it in accordance with what is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Despite their fear of the peoples around them, they built the altar on its foundation and sacrificed burnt offerings on it to the Lord, both the morning and evening sacrifices. Then, in accordance with what is written, they celebrated the festival of tabernacles with the required number of burnt offerings prescribed for each day. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments and with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals, took their places to praise the Lord as prescribed by David, king of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord. He is good. His love toward Israel endures forever. And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid, while many others shouted for joy. 
No one could distinguish the sound of the shouts of joy from the sound of weeping because the people made so much noise and the sound was heard far away. <clears throat> Our second reading is taken from the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, having heard the words of our Lord this morning, we stand with Christians from around the world and confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Brothers and sisters, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our song.
Will you join me in a word of prayer? Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for another amazing day. Remind us, Lord, of whose we are, and remind us, Lord, of the reason for this season. Lord, we pray this in all in your name, and all God's people said, Amen. The first Noel, the angel did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields as they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. Noel, 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 born is the king of Israel. I am sitting here just one week away from a very big, huge, and glorious day. It is a day foretold many, many years ago that a Savior would come and save us all, bro. So what do I say of a story we all have heard, that is when distractions set in. Oh, look, a bird. Matt, buckle down and get back to work. If you don't, you might look for another job, maybe, maybe a store clerk. It is Christmas, though, and I am waiting for he, you know the one, the one who comes down the chimney. No, wait, that, that's not what this is all about. Get back to Ezra, the book of Ezra, I shout. Back to the book of Ezra, for me, you see. The rebuilding of the temple is the story that would be. The building came to the people from an unlikely source. Cyrus, the king of Persia, put them on course. Wow, God working through a Persian king that is new and different and makes my heart sing. God works through many different kinds of people today. It does not matter the who, what, and or their life's way. As I look through the reading, I do not see much. Not much here on, the Christmas, on Christmas and Jesus and such. So what is the connection to the big day? Maybe Christmas appears here in a different way. Noel... Noel, 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 born is the king of Israel. The temple was promised to be rebuilt. I wonder if the people at that time wore a kilt. Hmm, I wonder if if a kilt does come in black. Oh, wait, my mind is again off the writing track. The people gathered to thank God for his gift. If Jimi Hendrix were there, he would play a really cool rift. The first thing they did was celebrate God. They built an altar where the temple would trod. The temple is a gift that God will give, just like a baby born to help us all live. They started this entire event with thanksgiving and praise. You know it contained prayer and singing words with beautiful phrase. The child is a gift so meek and so mild. This little baby is the gift of the Christ child. That is how all things should start, especially this season. Christmas is the time where Jesus comes first. He is the reason. Never forget to let your faith come out first. Praise God with all your heart as it might almost burst. Jesus is the goat, the greatest of all time. Greater than Jordan, Ali, and Brady could ever climb. Join me. Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the king of Israel. But there is more here than just who, who's on first. Abbott and Costello used that line. I know, I'm the worst. It is what we read next that caught my attention It was the building of the temple by its henchmen. I look at Ezra, verse 10 from chapter 3. Wait, what is it? What is this? What could it be? The temple foundation has been laid. The beginning of the temple is being made. You see, they laid the foundation so big and so strong. It was so big and large, it reminded me of King Kong. The foundation for the temple was celebrated with a lot of jazz. Celebration was amazing. It had all the pizzazz. The foundation 
holds a building up and straight. If it is not there, it will fall, and that people will hate. The foundation is where their temple will lay. They would make the stone out of mud and some hay. The foundation here is what holds the building together. The foundation for our faith is Jesus, who is with us forever. He is the one who Christmas is about. Because of him, like the Beatles, I want to twist and shout. The birth of Jesus is the beginning of our faith foundation. That is why we give him a standing ovation. A gift and a foundation are two things we have heard. I wonder, could there be? Could there be another? A third? Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the king of Israel. People were praising God for what he began. He was bringing back the temple. Yes, God can. But in verse 12, something did change. The attitude and noise of some was very strange. They were sad because the new was not like the old. It was different and odd, and that made their hearts cold. They wanted the old, so they cried to rearrange. They were like Ross from Friends saying, no one likes change. It was different and new. They liked the old way the best. So they cried out to the north, south, east, and to the west. This does not mean they did not like the new. They were just sad. They bid the old temple adieu. This brings me back to the start, the actions of the people in the beginning part. No matter their feelings on the new temple build, they all know that God, that in God, the building will truly be filled. You see, at this time of year, we all can gather around because we gather together singing and rejoicing out loud. You see, the temple they built in Ezra was new, but we also have a temple we celebrate here too. The temple is that new and is here now. It is Jesus, the baby, who has a halo on his brow. Jesus is the new, the child we love. He came to us, yes, from way up above. He is the one who fills us with joy even when we are sad and we have this joy in this little boy. It's, even, it's easy to see the story of his birth is worn out, but it is always new and fresh, and of it we get to shout. So next week we get to come back here and celebrate his birth, which is oh so near. We, did, we get to see him as a baby, so small and so cute. He is the promised one from King David. Yes, that root. Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the king of Israel. To close this message time today, I have but one more thing to say. The words of Simeon in the Gospel of Luke, these powerful words are powerful and not a fluke. These words that Simeon would profess are true words today, I must confess. Simeon said them to a small little crowd. Today, though, I will profess them loud and proud. For my eyes have seen your salvations, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for the revelation of the Gentile and the glory of your people, Israel. So friends, I pray these words hit you right in the heart. I hope for you they are beautiful and flavored just like a sweet tart. Go knowing that no matter the change or what stays the same, Jesus is the Savior, the way to heaven. Through him, we win the game. As we draw our time together to a close, let's go back to a time from long ago, a place where we started this message this day. The first Noel is the song we will say. The first Noel the angel did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay. 
in fields as they lay, keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was oh so deep. Noel, 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 born is the king of Israel. And all God's people said, Amen. Friends, we continue our message time with our gifts from God as we give our offerings to God. Friends, God has given us so much. He has blessed us with time. He's blessed us with our talents. He's blessed us with our treasures. And we give back to him a portion of what he has blessed us with. Friends, if you're so moved to give, you can still do that. But I want you to know that offerings don't go to just lights. They go to the spreading of the gospel. Thank you, ladies. They go to our children's ministry. They go to our adult ministries. They go to giving the gospel to people and help to people who are in need. And so, friends, we pray over these offerings, knowing that God will use them to expand his kingdom. Gracious Lord, merciful Father, we give you thanks for all that you have given us, our time, our talents, and our treasures. Lord, use these gifts to expand and grow your kingdom that all may know of you. Lord, we pray this in your name and all God's people said, Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand as we go to the Lord with our prayers of the people. Gracious Lord, gracious Lord, you're amazing. You're incredible. You have blessed us with so many things, and Lord, we are in awe of you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you sent your Son to save us all. And that, Lord, is the greatest gift we could ever receive. Lord, we know sometimes we forget this easy story to remember. We forget that we are not, we are not connected to you in the way that we should be. And Lord, sometimes we try to earn your love. Lord, remind us. Remind us all that we don't need to earn it. That it is in your Son that we have life eternal. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks, Lord, that, that, you, can, that you can bless us. That you walk with us. We give you thanks, Lord, that families are gathering together around this Christmas holiday as they celebrate your birth. And Lord, we ask you to keep them safe and healthy as they gather around sharing stories and memories and meals. Lord, we give you thanks for Chris, who was given the strength to overcome his anxiety and stress. And we ask you, Lord, to continue to bless him as he, he walks this path to healing. Lord, we give you thanks for birthdays, for those who are celebrating another year of life. Lord, we give you thanks for the birthdays of Aaron and Isadora, for Janice and Lisa, for Sharon and Emily, for Susan and Terry, for Leah and Barbara and Bill and Cheryl. Lord, we thank you that these individuals are celebrating another year of life. And Lord, we ask you to continue to walk with them and bless them. Remind them, Lord, that each year is another year in you, and each celebration is another celebration of a blessing and gift from you. And Lord, we give you thanks for anniversaries. The anniversaries of Chris and Ashley, Gail and Al, Ron and Kathy, Sandy and Pete. Lord, we thank you for the years that these couples have had together, and we ask you, Lord, to continue to strengthen their marriages, that they may grow stronger and closer to you, and that their love may be a model of your love for us. Lord, continue to help them grow closer to one another and in turn closer to you as they continue to rejoice in each other. And Lord, we also come before you today asking for healing for those who are in need. Lord, we ask you to be with Michelle, who is meeting with a heart surgeon and a cardiac uh, specialist, Lord. Give her calm and peace as she's having some heart difficulties at this time. Lord, we ask you to be with Lauren, 
who's suffering, suffering severe postpartum depression after a miscarriage, Lord. And we ask you to strengthen her, help her to find the healing and comfort she needs, and walk with her, Lord, through this entire ordeal. And Lord, we ask you for healing for Barb and Ed, for Val, Lord, who is looking at an upcoming surgery, Lord, and is still trying to find the strength she needs to walk. For Sharon and Tom and Janet and Jerry, Lord, who's dealing with cancer. We ask you, Lord, to be with Lori and Beverly, Lynn, Lois, Penny, Margaret, Dan, Kathy, Darlene, Betty, Kathy. Lord, you know each individual that's on this list. You know them by name and you know their needs. And Lord, we ask you to step up and step forward to help them, heal them and bring them back to full strength and health. Lord, continue to walk with them and continue to remind them, Lord, that they are yours. But not only them, Lord, we ask you to be with their caregivers as well. We ask you to be with those who are taking their time to care for them, Lord, the doctors, the nurses, the surgeons, the family and friends, that they may all continue to go with you being your hands and feet for these individuals. Lord, give them the permission to sit and rest when needed and to stand and go when called upon. Lord, all of these people and those that are on our hearts, we give to you as we continue with the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. As we prepare to share in this meal together this morning, we pause for a moment and prepare our hearts and minds to receive this amazing gift. And so I ask, do you believe you are a sinner? Yes, I believe it. I have failed God and others in my life. I am a sinner. Are you sorry for your sins? Yes, I am sorry that I have sinned. Do you need God's help and forgiveness for your life? Yes, I need the gift of life he gives through Jesus. What has Christ done for you? He died for me and shed his blood for me on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins. Do you believe that in communion you receive the true body and blood of Christ with the bread and wine? Yes, I believe it because of his word and promise. Then friends, having having pronounced this from our hearts and believing this in our hearts, come because the table is ready for you to join together in communion. If you have a communion kit at this time, I invite you to take that out and open the wafer side and take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Turn it over to the wine or the juice side and take and drink the blood of Christ shed to set you free from all of your sins. You may be seated as we continue with communion this morning. Just as a note, in our tray with the bread, we have regular wafers as well as gluten-free. You need to ask for those. And in our trays, we have wine on the outside with juice on the inside. And as always, we have the common cup. Come, for the table is ready.
Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sin is reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies with the angelic host proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Christ my highest heaven adored Christ the everlasting Lord Late in time behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail incarnate deity. Please rest in flesh to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Sing glory to the newborn King. Hail the heavenborn Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all He brings. Risen with healing in His wings. What He lays His glory by. Born that we no more may die, born to raise us from the earth, born to give a second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in one faith until life everlasting. Go in his peace and serve him with amazing joy. Amen. Friends, let's pray these words together. Strengthen us, O God, in the power of your spirit to bring good news to the poor and lift blind eyes to sight, to lose the chains that bind and claim your blessing for all people. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, honor, are yours. Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, few announcements this morning. First of all, in case you haven't heard or seen or understand, Christmas is coming. I know. It's amazing. Christmas is coming, and we'd love for you to join us in worship on Christmas Eve weekend. We have a whole bunch of services for you to choose from. With Christmas Eve falling on a Sunday this year, service times will look a bit different than they have in the past. Each service will have the same message and reading, but there will be a variety of different music styles. At 5 p.m. on Saturday the 23rd, that's Christmas Eve Eve, and 3 p.m. on Sunday the 24th, that's Christmas Eve. Everybody following me so far, right? Okay. Your favorite Christmas carols and hymns will be given a jazzy face, facelift and will be the perfect toe-tapping way to start your Christmas Eve celebration. At 10.30 a.m. and 1 p.m. on Sunday the 24th, Christmas Eve, the choir and orchestra will lead worshipers in traditional arrangements of Christmas hymns stirring memories of Christmas in the past. If you're one for late nights, Join us at 11 p.m. on Christmas Eve, where the Cathara Trio of harp, cello, and flute will help you wind down after a day of celebrating quietly as we prepare for our coming Savior's birth. 
Friends, a special note, there will not be service on Christmas Day. Again, I'll say that again. There is no service Christmas Day this year. The 10.30 a.m., 3 and 11 p.m. services will all be live streamed on Christmas Eve. The link will be available at pop.church slash Christmas. And the nursery will be open during the 10.30 and 1 p.m. services as well. Not only will we have services, but we want to encourage you. Consider who you might join and bring along with you for worship this Christmas. People are typically more receptive to the invitation at Christmas, and you never know what seeds might be planted. So go to a friend and say, hey, how are you doing? And invite him to church. Worship in person or online on Saturday, December 30th at 5 p.m. or Sunday, December 31st at 10.30 a.m. The 10.30 service will be live streamed. Friends, note that change. There is no 9 a.m. service on New Year's Eve, only 10.30 a.m. Our regular worship then gets back into normal schedule on January 6th and 7th, so please make note of that as you go forward. If you show up at 9 a.m. on New Year's Eve, we'll all laugh at you, okay? So don't do that. All right. And... Stop by the photo booth outside of the sanctuary here and take a family photo with some friends. The Pop Bakers have provided a delectable Christmas treats for you, and they're in the gym. So when you exit, go left, take a picture with family and friends, and then head on in for some sweet treats and some coffee and hot cocoa to sparkle your Christmas season. Friends, with that said, I invite you to stand as we close with a song, and let's all Scream loud, go tell it on the mountain. Friends, can we give it up for our dinglingers as well as our singers, Carrie on the Ivory, our media dudes, our reader, our worship hosts, worship coordinators. Friends, it takes so many people to make service happen. Love to have you part of that team. Come and talk to me and I'd love to get you on the team. Dottie is here for prayer now. If you have any prayer concerns, you can come up to the front of the sanctuary and she'd be happy and enjoy praying with you or taking you back to the prayer room to pray as well. Friends, go knowing that the reason for the season is Jesus, and we get to celebrate that 
for a long, long time. Friends, go with the blessing of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord, who is the reason for the season, may he bless and give you peace both now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Friends, get your picture taken, enjoy some sweet treats, and go Bears.